April 2nd, St. Francis of Paola, founder of the Minim Friar. St. Francis was born about the year 1460 at Paola, a small town in Calabria. His parents were humble, industrious people who made it their chief aim to love and serve God. They were still childless after several years of married life. They prayed earnestly for a son, and when at last a bow was born to them, they named him after St. Francis of Assisi, whose intercession they had specially sought. At the age of 13, he was placed in the Franciscan friary at San Marco, where he learned to read and where he laid the foundation of the austere life which he ever afterwards led. After spending a year there, he accompanied his parents on a pilgrimage which included Assisi and Rome. On his return to Paola, with their consent, he retired first to a place about a half mile from town and afterwards to a more remote seclusion by the sea where he occupied a cave. He was then scarcely fifteen years old. Before he was twenty, he was joined by two other men. The neighbors built them three cells in a chapel in which they sang the divine praises and in which mass was offered for them by a priest from the nearest church. As time wore on, more and more men joined them. This was then he founded the Minims, so called so that they were the least monastic of orders. They observed a perpetual Lent and never touched meat, fish, eggs, or milk. Francis himself made the rock his bed. His best garment was a hair shirt and boiled herbs his only fare. As his body withered, his faith grew powerful, and he did all things in him who strengthened him. He cured the sick, raised the dead, averted plagues, expelled evil spirits, and brought sinners to penance. A famous preacher, instigated by a few misguided monks, set to work to preach against St. Francis and his miracles. The saint took no notice of it, and the preacher, finding that he made no way with his hearers, determined to see this poor hermit and confound him in person. The saint received him kindly, gave him a seat by the fire, and listened to a long exposition of his own faults. He then quietly took some glowing embers from the fire, closing his hands upon them, unhurt, said, Come, Father Anthony, warm yourself, for you are shivering for want of a little charity. Father Anthony, falling at the saint's feet, asked for pardon, and then, having received his embrace, quitted him to become his greatest admirer and attain himself to great perfection. When the king, Ferdinand of Naples, offered him money for his convent, Francis told him to give it back to his oppressed subject and softened his heart by causing blood to flow from the ill-gotten coin. Louis XI of France, trembling at the approach of death, sent for the poor hermit to ward off the foe whose advance neither his fortress nor his guards could check. Francis went by the Pope's command and prepared the king for a holy death. The successors of Louis showered favors upon the saint, his order spread throughout Europe, and his name was reverenced throughout the Christian world. He died at the age of 91 on Good Friday, the year 1507, with the crucifix in his hand and the last words of Jesus on his lips, Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Rely in all difficulties upon God. That which enabled St. Francis to work miracles will in proportion do wonders for yourself by giving you strength and consolation.